Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, and it is Sunday, the 28th of April in the year 2024, and I am here recording this in beautiful Escazú, Costa Rica. And I want to get you as excited as I am about my alchemy class that I'm giving on Wednesday, the 8th of May, in a week and a half. And it's going to be an interesting class because it's it's going to be a taste of what it's like to work with me in mentoring. And it is the first class that's going to initiate a membership. So I'm going to give a class every month and you can be just coming to the class whenever you feel like it, or you can join the membership. Um, This first one is going to be particularly about a taste of what I do when I'm mentoring someone. And it's going to be me showing patterns that I use to uh, help clear old beliefs, help clear uh, old identities, um, rewire your brain, et cetera, et cetera. All the, all the things I've learned in my quantum integration coaching certification. Um, these are sort of tricks that I have and, and patterns. We call them patterns. They're metastating patterns. And I'm inviting you to this class so that you can experience it for yourself. Every month will not be that. It will be more of a training, a teaching, uh, an upgrade, uh, an energetic upgrade, an energetic activation, a, 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 an astrology update, um, stuff like that. So, and if you join the membership, there's going to be a group on Facebook and there's going to be like me putting goodies in there, all different sorts of inspirational things and, and messages and all sorts of other stuff other than just the class. So join me and I would love to hear from you about it. Write to me, info at thegoldenastrologer.com, deb at debmcbride.com. And we can, uh, I can give you some more information. I'll probably be putting out another mailing in the next few days discussing it more in depth. So you can stay in touch with me for that too. If you're not on my mailing list, go to thegoldenastrologer.com and join my mailing list. Um, The box, you know, there's the pop-up box that comes when you go to the website and you can just join there. And now about this astrology we've got coming up this week, lots to say. And first, I want to sort of recap a little bit of last week. Um, My friend said to me on Friday about, I told her what was going on, and she said, what a messed up day. And I just have to take that a step further and say, what a messed up week. (laughs) It was so... It was so intense, and there was so much going on. First of all, I think that the energies of the eclipse were sort of storing themselves up to just, like, release on this full moon that we had on Tuesday. And that full moon was powerful. I mean, it was very energetic. I didn't have good sleep Tuesday night. It was something where I really felt like, yes, the energies of the eclipse just all, like, burst forward and left. And what happened... What happened? So much happened. Because remember what I said last week, there was Mercury going direct on Thursday, but there was also that moon in Scorpio opposing Jupiter and Uranus that we just had a week ago, which feels like a month ago, a year ago, okay? It feels like so much has happened since then. But really, it was only a week ago, and we're still in Jupiter-Uranus. They are still conjunct. They are a little bit separate, but they are still conjunct. Be sure of that. And that energy is with us, and the Scorpio moon really is something always deep, right? But it was the full moon. And then there was this opposition to all that business in Taurus. Now, that's where I think things got intense. Because even though, even though the stuff in Taurus, and that was all way early Thursday morning, Wednesday was crazy. Wednesday was crazy. And Thursday was crazy. Wednesday was crazy. People writing to me, there's a full moon. Yes, I feel it. Yeah, you sure you do. (laughs) Because it didn't just, it just wasn't just a full moon, which is always energetic, but it just kicked out all those eclipses. And People telling me they got sick, people telling me they're in a bad way, people emotional, people, and I was running from one f- one call to another on Wednesday, so I had a class with Yerlin, and then I had a class with Melanie, and then I had to talk to my friend Gwen about business and things for our new vision system, and 
I was like, uh, by the time Wednesday was over, I was like burnt. <laughs> and I, all that energy happened Thursday, wee hours Thursday for me in my region of the world between, with the moon opposing all that business. And I slept and everything, but I woke up Thursday and I felt like hell. I felt like hell, a body aches, everything. And I just, and then I went over to see my landlady, Giselle, who's also my friend. And she was like, she's sick. She was sick. She, and I'm like, oh my God. So it just couldn't, it couldn't get any crazier. But then what, but it did. <laughs> Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m. There was an explosion outside and the lights went off and they went off for four hours. And just as I was saying, okay, I'm calling up for food because I can't cook. The lights came back on. And then Friday, sometime about 9.30 a.m., the water went off. And the water, they'd been doing so much with the water. And on my end of the property, there was not a lot of this water going off stuff. There was on the other side of the property. And I was, you know, saying, okay, it's not a big deal. But the problem was that my cleaning lady had come on Thursday. And she couldn't finish because she couldn't vacuum because the electric went off. So she couldn't mop and everything and do all the cleaning because she, so she stayed for a little while and she was coming back Thursday afternoon, well, Friday afternoon, and the water was off. So I had to like make arrangements for her with a big bottle of water so she could finish her job. And just as she was leaving, the water came back on. And an hour later, the electric went off again. I said, that's it, I'm done, I'm done. I packed up my computer. I went to the Intercontinental Hotel on Friday afternoon at 4.30 and stayed there for three hours. And I did my work and I listened to bossa nova music and I ate something and it was beautiful. And, I, and then my neighbor was texting me, the, the electric's back on. So <laughs> the, the Uranus is electricity, guys, okay? So the electric was off two days and the, um, you know, that trigger of the full moon, the trigger of Mercury going direct, it was just chaos. It was chaos. And I wasn't feeling great. You know, I, I feel like all my energy was like siphoned off in, in all of this last week. And I just, I didn't feel well. And what a crazy situation. Like, talk about Mercury going direct from retrograde. It was, yes, we have lights. No, we don't have lights. And that's what happened Thursday. They came back on. They went back off again. And then Friday, they went off again. And there was an explosion outside. And I'm just like, Ugh, not this again. Not again. And as soon as they went off, I'm like, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm leaving. And it's been fine ever since. Thank you. But it was, you know, the chaos of last week. I just, I can't even, that, those are perfect examples of chaotic astrology. This was chaotic astrology. It was eclipse energy leaving, Mercury retrograde energy leaving. It was, you know, this, this full moon tapping into everything else, you know, that we have going on. It was much too much. And frankly, it was so concentrated within a couple of days, well, like really Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for me, that I felt like the eclipses, while they brought situations up, and they were very clear situations, in my case anyway, situations for people and situations that were going on, it brought forward information and situations and, you know, emotional understandings of where we're at. It wasn't like this. This It wasn't cha like just unbridled chaos, like one thing after another after another. So if, if I'm not on calls, well, then I couldn't get on my New Vision support call Thursday because the lights were off. So... <laughs> I went out for a work walk Thursday afternoon and I walked to Crate and Barrel and their lights went off. <laughs> they came right back on again, but I'm like, once their lights went off, I'm like, I'm going home. <laughs> and it was just, it was just crazy. It was just this Uranus Jupiter is a lot of energy and with happening at the same time as so many other things. This is the thing. I can tell you something's going on. Like today, tonight, we're having Mars conjunct Neptune, okay? I don't think it's crazy, but it's not tapping into the same patterns. It's not tapping into the eclipses, and it's not tapping into Jupiter Uranus. So Jupiter Uranus came at the end of the eclipses, and the moon touched all of it. So that moon was hot, and it brought up all sorts of things, and I can't say there were all sorts of like, ah, incredible, beautiful, visionary things I had. It was just, uh, you know, just trying to keep up with the crazy events of the moment and try to have a normal life in this 
was enough. Enough. Um, so yeah, so we've got Mars Neptune happening tonight. And, you know, Mars and Neptune are an interesting duo. And they are in Pisces. And this is this is the end of Mars in Pisces. Mars is going to start its journey in Aries this week. So that in a minute. So here we have Mars and Neptune, and they are together, and Mars and Neptune are tricky. They, like I said, an interesting duo, but tricky. Mars asserts itself. Neptune doesn't want to be assertive. So what happens? We assert ourselves in a sneaky way, in a roundabout way, in a backdoor way, in a way that is not noticed by others so that we remain unseen because maybe we're not confident. Maybe we don't want to be seen, or maybe we are trying to pull the wool over somebody's eyes. This is a tricky time with Mars Neptune and I always tell people to be careful because you know this is where you can be uh the wool pulled and pulled over your eyes and someone tricks you. So you get tricked in a relationship, you get tricked in a friendship, you get tricked in a financial situation. And this is all happening in Neptune's sign of Pisces. And this is a very, very tricky aspect. Did they just insult me? Did they just steal from me? Was I just still, I think someone took my wallet. You know, it's like, huh, what? Did that just happen? Like, wow, did that person just underhandedly insult me? Wow, what was that? So it's, that's like an immediate response. The other energy about this is like you're able to like contact a deep place within yourself and move through something profound, some place of surrender, some place of release, some place of letting go, some place of recognizing um, the inherent gifts you have, recognizing, staying connected to something deep within yourself. Very powerful. It can be very powerful if it's used that way. If you're using it to pull the wool over someone's eyes, well, then, you know, you're just, you're just tapping into the tricky energy of Mars, Neptune. That is not the highest, highest expression of this energy. We want to see a place where we gain confidence because we've released something that was holding us back. We want to see a place of surrender to universe and higher mind, higher power. We want to see an energy that is altruistic because that's what Pisces is. Not necessarily a, a great sacrifice, but an act of altruism. And that's really a highest, highest energy of Mars in Pisces conjunct Neptune, an act of altruism. So where can you act altruistically right now? This energy will be with us. You know, it's not going away tonight after it happens. Um, it is 12.31 a.m. tomorrow morning Eastern time, which is 10.31 p.m. my time, 9.31 in the Pacific time zone. I am certain that there will be something that you recognize, realize, connect to as a result of this energy. It is happens it only happens once every two years where they're conjunct right now it's in right now it's in pisces when they meet up again the next time it will be in aries which is mars sign right now they're in neptune sign notice this write this down journal about it because maybe in two years when we have this again and if i'm still on this podcast which i probably will be and you're listening to me which i hope you are you are going to go back to your journal and say, this is what happened when it was in Pisces. Now we flipped the coin here and we're in Mars's territory. What does it feel like now? Very interesting. That could be a sneak attack, but let's not go there yet because we're still in Pisces. So that is one thing that's happening. Mars will change signs on Tuesday the 30th. It goes into its own sign, Aries, 11.33 a.m. And that's an interesting thing because... As it goes into Aries, now it's it's sort of completing that roundup of things we've had in Aries, right? We know we're in Taurus now. We know that the Jupiter Uranus is in Taurus. And, you know, Mercury is still in Aries. Chiron's still in Aries. And Mars is now coming in. And, of course, the North Node is in Aries. Mars is now coming in to you know, claim its sign for the first time in two years. And 
it's coming home. So where can we take steps forward now where this is going to be valuable to us? In addition, now you'd say Mars is ruling the heavens, but our friend Venus is going into Taurus tomorrow, 7.31 a.m. Eastern time. So Mars and Venus are now finally going into their own signs. They're both going home. Venus was in Pisces and then Aries at, during the eclipses, and Mars was in Pisces all this time during both eclipses. And now it's gaining its power back as it enters Aries. So this is interesting. The relationship planets are now going home. And so this is, this is very good. This means our relationships are going to give some clarity to our life. Uh, we're going to have, you know, more clarity in just dealing with people, dealing with our finances, Venus and Taurus, and just connecting with people is going to be, I think, a little easier. Now, one of the things that's going to happen, of course, Venus, as it enters Taurus, it's entering a fixed sign, and it enters on Monday, and on Tuesday, it immediately squares Pluto. And that's going to be, you know, again, at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time, so that means it's 12.30 a.m. Wednesday morning, Eastern time. So Venus is going to square Pluto. And that is always one of the more uh, deeper, profound aspects that we can have because Venus and Pluto are strange and interesting dynamics. You know, Venus is, this is, this is now a whole other ball of wax because Venus and, and Pluto are in fixed signs. So there is the dynamic of transformation that Pluto always enjoys, but Venus is now talking to Pluto in a stressful aspect and they are perhaps spatting a little bit because they're both stubborn. Pluto and Aquarius, Venus and Taurus, they may be showing us where maybe our relationships need some transformation but could be a little stuck or could be a little, mm, you know, stubborn. And we could easily use some good uh, insights around shifting and changing our relationships, right? Now, let, now that we're talking about Pluto, well, let's talk about Pluto. Both Venus and Mars are going to talk to Pluto this week because Mars is going to be in Aries. And, you know, everything's early. Pluto is still early in Aquarius. It's at two degrees. So Mars, after it's in Aries for a couple of days, is going to make a very lovely sextile to Pluto on Friday the 3rd. So we've got the relationship planets happening, happening for us with Pluto. So there's lots of, okay, they're in their own signs, but they are also moving into a place that talks to Pluto transformatively. So this week is going to be a little bit about what are we saying to Pluto? What are we having a conversation with Pluto about as relative to our relationships? And what even throws a more interesting spin on this whole dynamic is that Pluto is going to go retrograde on Thursday the 2nd. So that's going to happen at 1.46 p.m. Eastern Time. Wowie! So Pluto is finally, after entering Aquarius January 20th or so, going to go retrograde in Aquarius. And, oh boy, <laughs> so Pluto which is slowing down now. I mean, obviously it's stationing. Pluto is very slow anyway. So it's stationing and Venus is challenging Pluto and Mars is not challenging Pluto. Mars is talking to Pluto in a very casual, sextile, very nice way. So they're both, and, and the interesting thing is Venus is the day before the retrograde and Mars is the day after. So they're both going to be close to Pluto as we enter this new week. And Pluto is going to have something to say about our relationships. Where are we, where are we needing to some transformation? Where can we openly assert ourselves, Mars, in a way that is, you know, powerful and empowering and but not threatening to anybody, because Mars and Pluto are very tough together. And so how can we how can we do this in our relationships? What does Venus have to say to Pluto? And remember, there's always that Persephone myth, right? Venus and Pluto get together. There's some stories about women and, and maybe some darker qualities to their relationships and young women especially. 
right? So this is a very interesting relationship-oriented week. It's not going to be like last week. We are not getting into the frenzy of the Mercury turning direct with the moon, you know, shooting off here and there. We're not doing that. But the moon is going into Aquarius on Tuesday the 30th, right before Mars enters Aries. So the moon will enter Aquarius 11.20 a.m. on Tuesday and promptly conjunct Pluto at 3 p.m. This is all Eastern time, right? So the moon is going to not be so far from talking to Venus because the moon is going to square Venus first, then conjunct Pluto, and so there's a dynamic between the two goddesses and Pluto. Well, heck, if that isn't the Persephone myth, I don't know what is. Remember, Persephone's mother, moon, Demeter, was involved in that whole situation where she was out with Persephone and then Persephone disappeared and she was off with Pluto going into the underworld. So I expect maybe there's stories about this in the news, this kind of theme, mother, daughter, something happened to the daughter, et cetera, et cetera. They're reunited. The mother needs to accept that the daughter is all grown up now, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of goddess energy around Pluto on Tuesday and Wednesday. So then we're going to see how, you know, this all plays out with Mars. So I would say there's some real mythological stories going on this week. Venus, Mars, Moon, Pluto. This is all very relationship-oriented, and I'm getting the intuitive sense that we're going to watch some very interesting, powerful dynamics in our own relationships. And don't get into power dynamics. Try to be... Um, in a place of wisdom about these relationships. Don't, don't be like, well, yeah, I'm going to show them. Try to keep that out of the picture. <laughs> and so Pluto, our friend Pluto, is going retrograde in Aquarius. Now, this is not the first time Pluto went retrograde in Aquarius. It went retrograde in Aquarius last year. But last year, it didn't take very long for Pluto to retrograde right out of Aquarius, which it did a month after it went retrograde because it left in June of 2023 and it went back into Capricorn. This is different. Pluto has moved into Aquarius sufficiently enough to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to be in Aquarius for quite some time. And then it's going to step back into Capricorn about September 1st and stay there until about November 19th. Now, I've been telling people for shorthand, Labor Day to Thanksgiving. When I talk to like American people who have that, those calendar, those calendar dates, right? So that is a while from now. We're only at the end of April, beginning of May, and then it's going to take the whole next several months for it to go back. May, June, July, August, four months. And that's a good amount of time. Of Pluto before it goes back into Capricorn. I think that's fascinating because that means that Pluto is really in Aquarius and it's really there to stay for the most part until it dips its toe back into Capricorn for one last hurrah. Yeah, we're going to talk about this a lot over these next months because we're at this moment. So notice, notice again, we want to notice what happens Thursday when we are feeling that shift of Pluto going into his underworld. What's he doing? He's like, okay, I'll see you guys later. I'm going into my underworld. He'll go direct in October, but he's going to have to like turn around, make that pivot at the place in October and in Capricorn at the end. I don't think he gets past 29 Capricorn. He's not going back 28, 27. It's 29 Capricorn. He makes the pivot in October and turns around direct for the last time, and then it's full speed ahead into Aquarius and that's where we are for the next 20 years. Okay, so profound, profound shift. Notice what happens. What's going on for you? What's going on in your life? What are the dynamics? What are the power dynamics? Where are your own empowered dynamics happening Thursday and in the days coming as you feel that shift from Pluto going back to his underworld? What does that feel like? You know, when Persephone met Pluto, they went into his underworld. She was brought into his underworld and made the queen of the underworld, the goddess of the underworld. And 
what's interesting is now he's meeting with her. He's meeting with Venus, and he's going into the underworld. But Venus, actually, if we want to get specific, yes, this is about goddesses and women and girls and stuff with Pluto. And power things and relationships and triangles and relationships. And certainly Persephone, her mother, and Pluto were a triangle. But remember that he left the Earth. He came up for a few reasons. And he went into the underworld with Persephone. He didn't go back alone. And so they're going to meet up. He and the goddess are going to meet up. Venus in mythology, Aphrodite, started the whole ball rolling because she looked at them and she doesn't like chaste. You know, Aphrodite doesn't like it when people are chaste. Goddesses, anybody are chaste. So she saw Persephone and she's like, that kid, she needs to, she needs to become a woman. She needs to like stop being chaste and like come into her womanhood. And Pluto, he's down there in his underworld, hanging out in his darkness, in his underworld alone. And that's Pluto. You know, if you know Pluto Venus, if you are a Pluto Venus person, like I am, you'll know that those people, if you have Pluto Venus people in your life, those people are often alone. And we are. We are in deep, deep, deep relationships and then not. And deep relationships and then not. And so that's just the style of Venus Pluto. So he was down there in his underworld alone. And then you know that once Persephone was found by, you know, they knew where she was. She can only spend six months out of the year in the upper world visiting her mother because she uh, ate the pomegranate seeds of the underworld. So she had to go back into the underworld for the other six months of the year. Now, the interesting thing here is we're having some little scenario with all of that. So notice that in the news. Notice that in your own life. Notice how you feel. Is there a triangle? And do you want a triangle? You probably don't want a triangle. <laughs> Most people don't want a triangle. Oh, my God. My mother-in-law is coming, and I just can't deal. <laughs> That's so venus pluto you know, that's such a Venus-Pluto thing. The mother-in-law is showing up. Um, and even if you love her, even if they, it's just it's a triangle dynamic. Oh, the mother-in-law is coming to stay. You know, she's going to help with the grandkids. That's good. She's going to help with the kids. But, you know, there's still, there's still that dynamic. So this is a potent, powerful experience. One can hope that we move through it very uh, with wisdom, with awareness, and with connection to our feelings, our emotions, and our relationships, right? When things are in Aquarius, you know, like Moon and Pluto, things are always a little kooky in Aquarius, right? So th there's a dose of the unexpected still happening because it's Aquarius, and that's the nature of Aquarius. So work with it. Let it happen. Work with it. See what happens, you know. Um, and really do notice Pluto going to retrograde because it's, it's going to be, this is the last time it's going to spin back to Capricorn. And we'll be talking, like I said, we're going to be talking about this, especially when we get to September, October, and that first part of November. Um, and it's a very curious thing. You know, I expect some last thing. Like Pluto is not going out of Capricorn and not having a word with us, okay? It's going to have a word with us. <laughs> It's going to have something to say to us and each of us. So if you are ending some cycle that related to the Pluto and Capricorn that has been with us since 2008 and what that represented in your chart and, and to you, you should pay attention to this because Pluto is going to have a word with you. Everybody's had some experience since 2008, right? What was it when those things, you know, happened? What was it going, what was going on for you then? So much has happened since then. It's been a long time. You know, it's been, it'll be 16 years. For the most part, you know, Pluto's in Aquarius now, but there's this one little detail and something else that's left for us to work out and like shift before it leaves. There's some other piece of information, realization, connection, something that is going to really uh, just sort of tie it all up in a nice bow and leave, leave it where it was. Like, okay, we're done. We're done. And we will be done. Okay. So if you start to feel things come up as Pluto makes its retrograde, 
as you start to feel things come up, there may be leftover emotions and situations that you haven't cleaned up or that need cleaning up. Maybe they don't need cleaning up. Maybe you just have to acknowledge them and make peace with them. But there's something from all this time that has to, we have to make peace with or something that is lingering in our fields so that we have to connect with this experience of Pluto going back into Capricorn, right? What, what peace is it that you're laying to rest? I've been in this identity program with Melanie and Layer, and it was an invisible offer. So I got in at the very bottom of the invisible offer and then it evolved into this identity work. And so I've been through five days of it. It's been very intense, very intense because today she went on for three hours and it was powerful. But, you know, she's telling people to lay down certain parts of their identity that they've been hanging on to that are no longer useful to them and that they keep going back to before, you know, before they can really grow and thrive and, you know, and she said some, she said some, very, oh, lots of interesting things, but, you know, she was talking about when we say everything happens for a reason. And she said, maybe that's not, because then you start wondering why. And she said, that's maybe not the way we're supposed to be phrasing it. Maybe it's, if everything's happening for me, not to me, if everything's happening for me, then now what? And so, now what? With Pluto goes back into Capricorn. Now what? Um, another hilarious thing that happened um, for me was that. <laughs> so I'm in this identity program, and it's been the since Wednesday, and and I used my new vision system on Friday when when I had electric, and um, I asked, I wasn't feeling great, so I was like running scans on myself, and one sentence came up, and we programmed it with these things. It said. This person may not be who they say they are. It was referring to me. I'm scanning myself. This person may not be who they say they are. Do not proceed. And this is a warning for the practitioner who is not showing their screen to the client. <laughs> In case, you know, they're being told that this person is not giving you all the story or they're not giving you all the information. And certainly that happens with practitioners and their patients and the clients. But I'm scanning myself and I'm in an identity program and I'm being told this person may not be who they say they are. Well, guess what? I must have had some sort of identity shift that I was in the process of making because the, the system scanned my field <laughs> and picked it up. <laughs> and, and the people in the group thought this was funny because I posted it. So yeah, it was pretty funny. That is our week. Pay attention to Pluto. It's a Plutonian week. We've got Venus, Pluto. We've got Mars, Pluto. We've got Venus and Mars going into their home. It's a Plutonian week. Saturn's been awfully quiet, right? <laughs> you know, we've got some Mars, Neptune today. We had some Jupiter, Uranus. Saturn's been quiet. Yeah, I can't say much about Saturn right now, although the moon and Saturn are going to meet up this week um, on Friday evening, 7.05 p.m. Eastern time, which, you know, it happens every month. So I can't imagine, like Saturn is not in some kerfuffle with other planets. So it's just... It's just hanging out right now. So that doesn't mean there's not lessons to learn. It's just, it's just not in a kerfuffle. Thank you for listening. Again, if you'd like to join my alchemy class a week and a half from now, please contact me, deb at debmcbride.com, info at thegoldenastrologer.com. If all of this has proven to be so much for you and you need to sit down with me and look at your chart, by all means, you can book with me, thegoldenastrologer.com, book online, book a session, Maybe you'd like a nice Reiki session to clear all the dust and the cobwebs and the, the old energetics of the eclipse season. Maybe you'd like a nice astrology session. And if you'd like to do expansion mentoring with me, that would be divine. Just contact me and we'll work it out. Have a beautiful Plutonian week. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next Sunday. Gratitude to all.